welcome back and thanks for joining this lesson again in this video we are quickly going to start with setting up our project i have a github repository of uh, a startup project which i had already done and this was uh, built or uh, scaffolded using the cookie cutter template and i will add the link to the video description to cookie cutter and for the sake of the uh, new uh, newbies or the beginners uh, joining us i will uh, demonstrate how to set up the project from scratch so when you go down to the description we can see here so if you haven't installed this before you just have to run pip install cookie cutter and then install i already have it on my system so i will not do that so we grab this url and run it on our local on our system so i'll be creating this project in in this folder so i'll uh, i'll call it let me make a new directory and I'll call this peer to peer landing. Go into our project. And then we run the code we paste that we copied. And because I've already downloaded this on my system, let me see if I can make uh, this screen much bigger. All right, so. I think I just destroyed it all. Okay, so let me see. Okay, so I can make it much wider this way. All right, so because I've downloaded it on my system, I will not re-download it. But if you are downloading this for the first time, uh, I think it will ask you this question. So I will not going. I'm not going to download it again. So no. Yes, I'm going to stick to the existing version, which is the latest enter. So the name of the project. So our, the name of our project is going to be Vigo Landing, Vigo Land. Okay, so I'll stick to Vigo Land. And uh, project Slack, I'll maintain Vigo Land. And the uh, description, uh, peer to peer, London marketplace for global clients and the art name I'll put my name there and the domain name because you can't just leave it as it is like example.com but I'll just use this it has no um, influence uh, so email webmaster at vigoland.com the version of our project it, it can be version any version you want to call it i'll stick to 0 0.1.0 so uh open source license i will go with mit if it's not if your project is not going to be open source then you can just select the op uh, option five so one your time zone i'm in poland so europe also and i'm programming on a mac so no just hit enter so if you are using pycharm for this project for this development or as your ide you have to indicate yes i'm using a uh, i'm using visual studio code so no i'm not using docker my postgres sql version uh i'm using version 12.3 so one so please check the version you have and then uh, select the appropriate one and if you're using an older version you can also upgrade so i go with one and tax runner no and cloud provider one or you can choose none if you're not going to use cloud uh, uh any cloud provider 
this is going to install some um, models for you so that later you you wouldn't have to do this on your own later so it's more like a pre-configured uh, a pre-configuration of your project so the mail server i'll choose six uh send grid and use async no i uh, use drf yes uh no use compressor yes no mail hog mail hog is like the mail client so instead of receiving or checking the emails in your console you use receive it in a beautifully uh, uh, uh represented interface i showed this in the demonstration earlier on so uh yeah we will use a mail hog yes sentry we will use this later but for now we don't need it so no white nose yes uh yes because we will be hosting it to on heroku but if you have any other provider you ch you hope to host uh, deploy your application or you just you can just choose no but for the sake of this uh, project we will go with yes and our ci2 github that's what i'm using and yes we will store uh, yeah keep variables in our local environment so yes and debug mode yes and the project is initialized in our folder so let's let's check this let me clear my screen and ls yes and we have um vigo land in our uh, folder so i will create a virtual environment i'm using virtual env and i hope everybody know about a virtual environment so i don't have to explain what it is but you can read on it so virtual env i'll call my environment then b e n d okay so virtual environment is online and then we can activate virtual environment oh. okay so virtual environment is activated already so let's go to visual studio code now and see what we have so open folder and it's in development tutorials php landing right and we bring this project in okay so now let's turn on to visual studio so we have our virtual environment here and then we have the project we just scaffold that uh, the cookie uh, cut us um. now i'll quickly take you through the organization of the project structure with uh, which uh, has been a structure you know okay, oh, sorry okay cancel all right so this is where you find the, the, tra the traditional settings uh, <laughs> the url.py is in config you have the api router here and the settings has been you know um, uh, grouped into three so this is the base settings and the local settings and then the production settings so uh, this is really good separation of concern so that you know you structure your code very well so that uh, sometimes you don't make mistakes in uh, configuring something that is not in its right place so this is the structure of the setting so we will be dealing mostly with the base settings and sometimes uh, the local settings and if there are settings related to the production uh, uh, settings this is where we will do this so yes that is that that is something to notice and this is the locale so for language and this is requirements and in the requirements likewise is group in three so this is uh, these are the base requirements the local requirements and production so if you want to install or use a model that is just for local purposes i advise you you, you put them here and 
production related models also go likewise to the production TST. And this is just utilities. We are not going to go into that. And this is our project folder. Now, when we go to the project folder, we have the country, the static folder where we're going to be keeping, keeping our static files, the templates folder for template. And this is the users. Uh, so this is the only app that is uh, pre-installed. So this is the, uh, the, the users um, folder. So we have the API and the, the serializer, the view for just the user view and migration. So this, I'm sure everyone has seen this before, but we're going to be making some tweaks to this uh, before we, 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 we run migration because that's the next thing to do. So to one, um, when you initially scaffold this project, please do not run migration, but you can choose to run migration, but after running the migration, you may not have you know, the projects in the way it is. It's, it is so we all start off from the same foot. So I'm going to make some changes. Now, when we go to the models in user, it's inheriting the abstract user, but I will be making some changes. I have this convention of making sure that uh, my IDs are usually not in integers like an auto uh, incremental integer. So I like to have my IDs in UUID, you know, so it's not easily, uh, you can easily guess this that, okay, if uh, user one has an ID of one, then the user two is two, three, four, and in that order, I, I usually don't like this. So I think we should um, change this. This is, these are the few modifications that has been done. And so, yes, and the next thing, so let me pin this here because we'll be working with the user app a lot. So I'll pin this. Um, now, next thing to consider, let's go back to settings and base. In here, because we're using uh, Postgres SQL, we have to actually create the database. If you use an SQLite, which I don't recommend for this project, uh, this can be, uh, uh, this will automatically be created for you. But uh, because we're using Postgres, we have to now create this uh, database. So let me open my PG Admi 4. If you don't know what PG Admi 4 is, a graphical interface for Postgres SQL you know, database. I will also add a link to it. So let's create a database called Vigoland. You can call it any name. So just I will stick to the Vigoland. So we have our database here. So now it matches with this. And we go back to our user model. Our user model. Yes. Yeah, so now in the user model, we have just the name, the first name and the last name, which has been taken out. That we will not do that for now. So we go to migrations folder and the initial migration here. Yeah, so the initial migration, um, the ID is autofilled. So we will want to change this to UUID field. Yes. And um, default. Default will be UUID dot UUID four. Okay. And primary key. Okay, so we just yeah, it's definitely going to be the primary key. And so we bring you we import UID. Yes, I think so. I think that's that should be correct, I guess. Now, I don't know if we need this or not. Uh, auto created, but um, okay, so let's just take care of this for now. OK, 
Okay. All right. So now I think that is all we're supposed to do here. Okay. All right. So I think these are the only settings we support we we can do here. So let's try to run migration and hope it doesn't fail. Let me clear my screen. Go to our project. We go land and first let's 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 see okay so let's activate our virtual environment here also and let's run okay so yeah i forgot that i forgot to do that <laughs> okay because we we need to install the the requirement the required uh, components in our virtual environment so i haven't done that so this is the requirement folder so the requirements folder and when we check this this is the base and the local so the local also reads from the the base so let's install all these uh, models or plugins Sometimes I interchange. Okay, so pip install read requirements folder inside the requirements read the local dot txt. Okay, so you wait a moment and it will record. Uh, it will install all the components and when it's done, I will be back. So welcome back. We've got all the models installed successfully so let's continue from where we start okay so i think we've we've um, edited the the id so we will get rid of auto created to be true and serialize is false editable is also false so this cannot be edited now we go back to our uh, user model and let's implement the id field here okay we, we can just skip that for now right okay let's 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 do that so all right let's let's skip that for now and run our migration so now we can run server and see if we are on track. Yes, it's telling us to make my to make migration or to migrate. So let's go back here. So Python three manage migrate. Voila! So migration has been successful. And so we can check what we have. So this will be the base project. So if you follow through the instructions, you will have this. Or if you just don't want to go through the whole process yourself, you can just clone this repository and you will have the same project as this. So if so now let's let's test this now. Now there's one thing we're supposed to do during the scaffolding process. We choose the option of mail hog. So if you do not have a uh, mail hog on your system, you can go to mail hog. No. Okay. So you can go to mail hog. Okay. This is mail trap. So go download mail hog. So you can see, you can follow through this process to download on Mac OS and other operating systems. So this, this is, this is how Mailhog looks like, but it's not necessary to, to use it. If you just opt for, uh, if you don't opt for Mailhog, then that means, uh, you have to uh, read the uh, emails from your console. So that is Mailhog. So. Okay, so now we can test our project 
I'll start that project. So let me power on Mailhog. So it's Mailhog is available now. So this is what we have. Jane uh, example and the username Jane Smith and simple password. Okay, so what do we have here? This is an error that says what? Now value in column ID. So in column ID is now. So this is because of the 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 ID alteration we just did altering. So uh, let me fix this here. Mm, ID is models that UID field. So default UID UID four editable. Next. The unique I of the customer. Let's import this. Then import your ID. I think so. This is it. So let's check our adapters forms. So it's it's quite simpler if you just uh, clone the startup project because uh, this is a this is a template and I, I had to you know uh, find a way work around it and you know customize it for my own needs. So let's see if this error. Oh, we got something wrong here. So UID field. Okay. Mm. Well, yeah, primary key. Okay. It's true. Okay, let's run make migrations. Okay. I hope. So yes. So now email has been sent to our mail hog which is supposed to arrive here and you see we have um the email which will after confirmation we confirm and we are in so now let's log in again jane uh, example and our password oh I just I just forgot the password I used, but I hope you get the idea. I just forgot the password I, I, I provided during the registration. So this is what we have. And in the subsequent video, we will customize it more to tailor for our needs. Thank you for watching this video.